Hello, and welcome to the Second Drafts podcast, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. I'm Jeremy. I'm EJ. And today we'll be discussing whether the audience has agency over how a, story, a, how a story develops. Mm-hmm. So kind of uh, something that we held off on talking about in our last one when we were talking about video games, um, which kind of sparked this discussion. The video game series Mass Effect, uh, there's a pretty big sci-fi action series uh, role-playing game uh, Mm -hmm. where you make choices throughout the three games and they actually carry over so from the first game to the second game to the third game your choices will affect what happens Mm -hmm. and there was a lot of backlash because when the third one came out the ending you had some choices at the end but they were very limited and you don't really get to see the full effect of all of your actions from the whole series. It just kind of ends and you get whatever happens that you choose and then that's it. And Mm -hmm. what ended up happening, uh, if you guys don't know there, was uh, there was a lot of backlash because of this and eventually uh, the Mass Effect team ended up changing the ending so they changed it based on the fan feedback or backlash and uh one interesting thing there was there was even a lawsuit over it uh false advertising i believe it was uh you were just looking it up there weren't you You yeah yeah exactly yeah one of the fans i mean that that's got to be a hardcore fan <laughs> he yeah, he went through all the marketing material and he threatened to take this to the FTC based on false ads. You know, the ads claimed that your changes would uh have an impact on the ending, make completely different endings, and then what fans ended up getting is uh I, I think I remember this, that you had like a big explosion and people would make jokes about it that uh you know, your choices simply changed the color palette of the ending. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got the red ending or the green ending or the blue ending, but other than that, not much was different between the three yeah. endings. So, I, I, yeah, I can get why they were upset, and this one guy threatened to sue. But, uh, you know, as it turned out, he wouldn't have had quite enough to to carry a, a you know, a lawsuit. But uh, I think part, that partly probably made Bioware um, take note at the very least. And yeah, yeah, it would definitely draw some eyes for sure. Yeah, I, d- <laughs> yeah. I don't, I definitely don't think it got any traction from what I recall. Yeah. But uh, just even the fact of them going back through and changing it there, um, it just brings up that question. And uh, I thought we could kind of discuss that. And audience, of course, you can always let us know your thoughts at the end there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but do you think that? the audience really should have any control over a story and how it kind of develops and even, uh, say, in the course of an ending. Like, uh, should they really have any say over it if they don't like it, say? Because really when we get down to it, it's like they just don't like the way that the creators felt that an ending uh, should have gone about. But mm-hmm. does that make it necessarily bad? And should it be changed because of uh, the reaction that it gets. And I'm interested mm. to hear your thoughts on that, Ethan. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, look, I think anybody has the right to express unhappiness. I mean, if, if nobody was ever unhappy with any movie endings or any book <laughs> endings, it would you know, that's crazy. It's never going to happen. Uh, even TV series, like I know a lot of people complained about The Sopranos ending and Lost. Yeah. Let's not even go there. But uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you're always going to have people who don't like it and you can always say that, but then, yeah, what we're talking about now is people kind of demanding a change and then the creators actually hearing that and making the change, which is, you know, a little bit different. But uh, mm. but I think, I mean, you, you'll probably have two schools of thought on this, and the one is that, you know, okay, fine, let's say somebody says, okay, it's art, it shouldn't change. 
On the other hand, um, doesn't a person who writes, at least at least partly, a writer writes for the market, right? That's that's kind of what the end game is. You're trying to write a story, make a story mm-hmm. that's going to impress enough people so that they, you know, are willing to pay for that story. You know, it sounds a bit like uh, commercialism, but uh, in the end, that's kind of what we all want to do. We want to write stories, we want to share them, and hopefully that leads to some kind of a, a compensation. And mm-hmm. since you're doing that anyway, aren't you already making the audience determine your story and also by extension your ending because you know you are kind of writing to market as well maybe not exclusively but at the very least you're not going to purposely do something in your story that you know is going to anger so many people <laughs> so <laughs> it was all a so, dream yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes that just that just kills me but uh, <laughs> but exactly so you're already kind of letting the audience determine what you're going to do and what you can't do. So is it really that different to make it just allow them to do that after the fact as well? Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Like there's, I think there's kind of two sides to the coin almost, uh, something that could happen before publication and then kind of after publication. Um, when it comes to before publication, say like what you were saying, uh, the market dictating it, like, um, we have those cliches that we don't usually want to get into. So say it's all a dream for the Mm -hmm. ending. You know, we all know that that's a very cliche way to end it and people really dislike it. Mm -hmm. So if we ever wanted to say, end it like it was a dream, we wouldn't do that because nobody likes it. So that's already kind of affecting it, but we haven't really published it. So is that really the audience shaping it or is it just us uh, ensuring that we, you know, work a little bit harder (laughs) to make a better ending? Yeah. And on the, oh, you go. Yeah, sorry. No, it seems to me like, you know, you're kind of allowing the audience to shape it, or at least your expectation of what the audience are going to want or say. So, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It feels almost the same. <laughs> because what we're doing now is we're treating the point of publication as, as something really special. As mm-hmm. once it's published, once, you know, it goes out there, uh, somehow it's not allowed to change. But if you think about how publishing is working nowadays, it's starting to change. It's becoming a lot more fluid. And especially with self-publishing on the rise, which is kind of our our thing that we we're kind of aiming at all the time even with this podcast um like before your publish date you might have beta readers 10 other people might read the story in order to give you feedback so how's that different from Mm. you know taking feedback from your readers and changing your story based on that it's kind of the same thing as your beta readers yeah (laughs) i think uh, part of it um would come down to even just the amount that kind of gets changed. Like I think if uh, after publication, say, uh, mm-hmm. if there's something that you find uh, people don't like the ending, they put a review up, something like that, um, how you shape it afterwards, uh, it all depends on how much you change it. Because say that, there's discussions about it like in those reviews or whatever they go into even detail sometimes they wouldn't because of spoilers but uh if they go into detail about the ending then people kind of have something to look at there and say like okay this was the ending and then if they go and read it and it's completely different then what are they going to think right yeah and i think it looks strange <laughs> yeah and i think almost with the self-publishing side of things you might even uh, get a little bit, a little bit more leeway with that, because of how not famous <laughs> you might be. <laughs> exactly. So you don't yeah. really have those people discussing it or anything like that, and uh, yeah. you might be able to get away with changing a little bit more than the norm, and mm-hmm. then uh, the next people that come along kind of and see uh, see your book will get the new one, and hopefully it'll be a little bit better than before. Yeah. 
And it almost feels like... Oh, you were going to say? Oh, sorry. It's just a question I have. It just occurred to me. If, say, you want to change a part of your book, do you think Amazon would give you the... or allow you to contact the people who left reviews on your book? Let's say there's four reviews that specifically mention details in your story, uh, criticizing it, and now you went and changed it. Do you think Amazon would allow you to contact those people and tell them, look, I listened to you, I changed it, would you mind writing another review? I wonder whether that would work. Well, I was actually just going to get into that uh, there. Uh, sorry with, that. <laughs> well, no, no worries. It's a good segue. Um, with the Amazon side of things, uh, they almost seem very perceptive to that, to those changes, because on the one end, uh, with their recent changes with the review system, uh, it favors newer reviews over older ones. So if you get, say, a review that's saying like the ending is bad or the grammar is mm. bad, that sort of thing, you can update the novel and put it back out. And then if there are newer, newer reviews that are better than the previous ones, it's going to weigh more heavily with those newer ones. Okay, and that's in terms of the star rating now. Yeah, okay. and so that will uh, kind of help your uh, your overall rating. Mm -hmm. And if you do make changes in the book, uh, there are certain situations where you can contact Amazon and they would, in fact, send out emails uh, to the people letting them know about an update. Um, okay. From what I've heard... Uh, it's mostly uh, substantial updates or if they are, uh, say, critical updates like a technical issue or something like that, causing mm -hmm. causing it not to work or like a virus or something like that, <laughs> uh, that would be a critical update that they would contact. I'm not sure on the just the matter of changing the ending and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but I guess it all really depends as well on the rep that you get. So <laughs> yeah. they might See, send it out. The way I see it is, well, common knowledge on this case says that when you change stuff like typos in your book, uh, there's no need to get a new ISBN because it's still the same product. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you start changing the content, like say you change the ending, that's, that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. And then usually people would advise you at that point, even the ISBN needs to change to reflect the fact that this is really now a different product. Um, I think part of what you might have to do when you change something as drastic as the ending is to, if it's really that important to you, you can bite the bullet and re-release the book under a different ISBN. But then, of course, what's going to happen is you're going to lose all your reviews mm -hmm. that are linked to that book, uh, the good ones as well as the bad ones, and that's not something you might want to do. It's going to end up, you know, what's more important to you in this case. But I think almost you could almost say the, the honest thing to do would be to kind of re press the reset button and uh, re-release just from scratch, maybe with a new cover. Uh, and you know, the problem becomes not everyone can afford that. I mean, now you have to have a new yeah. cover as well as a whole spiel of publishing it again. <laughs> but. Well, I think that's also the good side of uh, being with Amazon uh, and CreateSpace, say. Uh, well, CreateSpace is a little bit harder. I'll tell you my experience with that. But uh, on Amazon, you can upload the new book and uh, you can even change the title and do anything that you want with that side of things. Okay. And it'll stay always on the, uh, what they call the AS, ASIN is the Amazon okay. uh, number. Nice. Um, and that can all basically be changed and you don't need to update that so at least it's ter in terms of reviews on the ebook that's that's perfect kind of for that mm. do you think um, that includes when you change the isbn which i know is separate from the asin well yeah with that sort of things uh on my end my book used to be called freedom just oh, yeah. freedom and over the course of you know the years that i've uh, been doing this for uh, common advice is uh, the title is very important and uh, searching for the title uh, would help there so I changed it to Blackbeard's Freedom because Blackbeard is a very well-known pirate so it would be very mm -hmm. clear hopefully that it's a pirate story by it being called Blackbeard's Freedom 
Yeah, definitely. So I was able to change the Amazon side of things perfectly fine, no issue. But on CreateSpace, I had to make a whole new ISBN and set up the whole thing again. And eventually I was able to get it so that uh, they were linked. So the previous version of it, Freedom, was basically just labeled as a previous version. And so they were all able to be linked together. But trust me when I say the crazy space end of things, it was not easy whatsoever to get that done. It took me several emails back and forth, and I think like weeks actually it took to get that all fixed, uh, to get it all linked together and get those reviews back on. So it was quite a hassle. But uh, the Kindle side of things was very easy. So Which kind of just supports my recent kind of idea I got that I was just thinking, you know, the, the create space side of things, so much effort for, uh, you know, not so much gain. I'm, I'm so tempted to say for a while that I'm just going to be doing Kindle releases <laughs> and then at some point down the line I'll look at create space again. It's just... Oof. So much work. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and then you're paying more for the extra cover to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put that on there. Exactly. But so on this main topic we've got, I would like to ask you: Would you do that if, let's say, your reviews came back that said, "Oh, your story is brilliant all throughout, except we don't like the ending." Would you go and change the ending of, say, one of your Blackbeard books? <laughs> is that something you would do? Well, I uh, I actually already have. <laughs> oh, you have? Yeah. Uh, the beginning and the ending, actually, I changed a little bit. Um, I I try to, of course, keep everything all there. So all the content is kind of still there. Mm -hmm. But people were saying that the beginning was a little slow. So I trimmed things down a bit, rearranged a few things. Okay. Uh, and I've done that actually several times to just try and t tweak it to get it to the right uh, balance because uh, okay. I can definitely understand where they're coming from, where there's not very much action. It kind of takes a little bit to get into it. So mm. I tried to change it around so that you get into that, the meat of the story a lot sooner. Okay. Um, but still all the same elements are there. Mm. Uh, and I remember one particular thing I even changed around a couple chapters so that they were later in the book so that certain events could happen sooner and it didn't really uh it didn't really seem to affect too much i did have to use a little do a little changes there okay. um minor changes here and there to fix it but overall it was fine and uh, i think it's definitely a lot better now than it was hmm. and uh in terms of the ending um some people were saying that it was uh, confusing and uh, a little bit too unrealistic. So I changed okay. around some of the wording and some of the the things that happened there so that uh, it gets just a little more realistic, a little bit more believable. But okay. again, most like the actual plot elements didn't change. It was just kind of what was happening around it. So... Okay. I, well, I that, have that done might that be, already. <laughs> that might be luck on your part that you didn't have to change, you know, the, the absolute core at the end. Yeah. But uh, what if it necessitated that? What if, I mean, let's say you killed off a particular character and uh, <laughs> suddenly, you know, by popular demand, people are saying this shouldn't happen. Would you ever <laughs> consider, I mean, is is the art part of it sacred to you? Or do you think... No, yeah, make the fans happy. What What's your opinion on that? Well, I mean, I guess it would all depend on kind of the circumstances of it. Because mm -hmm. uh, it just reminded me, you just reminded me of uh, Sherlock Holmes. Oh, yeah. And how there was the uh, Reichenbrack Falls situation where he and Moriarty kind of fell into the falls there and that was yeah. supposed to be him killing off the character uh but due to fans again kind of what we're talking about there uh <laughs> fans wanted more Sherlock Holmes stories so he did another story and brought him back and like to kind of I don't know if 
I can't remember if he actually explained how he survived or if they just kind of glossed it over. Yeah. But uh, there was kind of a good situation where it was almost like you couldn't find the bodies, so he could easily kind of bring them back there. So, yeah, but if you have a situation chunks. where the character is, you know, getting stabbed <laughs> thirty times, yeah, I don't know really if you're gonna could... have trouble with that resurrection. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... but uh... yeah, I remember in the in the film, the the Game of Shadows film, they they set it up quite neatly, of course, but then they had the benefit of hindsight to know that the character needs to survive so yeah yeah <laughs> and just that little tidbit at the end was quite funny there too i don't know if anyone's yeah. seen it but you should watch it it's a good film yeah. uh, quite funny at the end there too mm. but yeah on on that side of things i i honestly don't know i think it would just depend on the situation and uh the it would depend on that artistic merit like with the mm. whole sherlock holmes side of things you know it'd be easy to bring him back and um, artistically, with his character, there he was kind of one, one-sided almost. So he, w I don't think he was really sacrificing himself so much for that. I can't remember. Like in the movie, it was a little bit different than the yeah, books. Obviously, the movie, he but... sacrificed himself to keep Watson out of danger, yeah. something like that. But I don't think it happened quite the same in the books. Mm -hmm. So, on an artistic side of things, it'd be. Uh, a lot easier to bring him back for the book side of things than the character development that he kind of loses when he survives <laughs> with yeah. the other side of things. Yeah. Well, yeah, sometimes no. the intention is the only thing that matters, right? So yeah. often in movies, I mean, we like the storyline where the hero decides to sacrifice his life and then partly because he did, he ends up surviving anyway. But, you know, because he was willing, we're happy with it. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't have to pay the price. He just has to be willing to. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what about you? What would what would you do in that situation? <sighs> yeah, that's that's a tough one. It's because uh, I think, at the risk of being, you know, not original, I I'm kind of going to agree with you. It it'll depend on the situation. I mean, it depends on what part of the story it is. Is it something that I really was invested in, and I really want to play out that way? Um. If, I mean, if I really needed to be that way, because that's how I planned it all along, I I might be a little less inclined to to bow to such pressure. But uh, on the other hand, I mean, I think as an artist, you would be incredibly lucky to have fans engage with your work in such a way that they're even, you know, willing to make lawsuits in order to be heard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's fantastic. Actually, it it sounds bad, but it's 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 really amazing. And uh, you'd be well, lucky to have such invested. fans. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You'd be lucky to have such fans. And for the fans as well, I mean, they'd be really lucky to have an artist that they're a fan of that who's willing to make those kinds of changes. So even though I might resist um, making some changes that people are demanding, for instance, I think my opinion might be swayed a lot more if I keep this in mind, that, you know, these... These fans are really... I must add a caveat, though, of course. By making that change to the ending or something like that, just keep in mind that you're going to make happy these fans that complained, but you're going to make unhappy a ton of other fans who did not complain <laughs> and who maybe kind of liked the ending the way it was. So <laughs> you're never going to make everyone perfectly happy. Yeah. That's just something you have to accept. So in the end, yeah, I guess it'll come down a bit to numbers as well. Money. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> numbers of fans, I meant. <laughs> but yeah, I suppose if you want to uh, state it that way, <laughs> you could say it that way. But it'll come down to, you know, how many people are you going to anger by making this change and how many people are you going to make happy? And it doesn't help to, you know, impress your nano with the change, but, you know, 500 rabid fans are going to hate it. <laughs> so that's just going to suck for you. <laughs> I think that was uh, maybe one of the rumors there with uh, the Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle brought him back mm -hmm. because none of his other books were selling. So, <laughs> yeah, I suppose that is as good a reason to do it. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that being the reason. Yeah. Um, Whatever sells, sells. Yeah. And I think sometimes people focus a bit too much on the art. You know, the art is sacred. The art is 
perfect the way it was made the first time, except, you know, except when it's not. <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, in the end, creating one version of the story is pretty much the same as the artist creating another version of the story. They're still just making it up, let's be honest. Hmm. So it doesn't help to say the art is sacred the first time out. Why specifically the first time out? Why not the second or the third time? <laughs> And we come back to the the beta readers and their effect and stuff like that. So, I don't, well, I mean, I don't it, think it, it can helps. also it can also yeah. probably come down to uh, just kind of diminishing your pride, like uh, taking that away because you know you might think that you came up with the perfect ending, but somebody says that it just doesn't work, and you know, kind of letting go of your pride to admit if, you know, it really is a bad ending. Maybe that uh, could be a reason to change it as well, mm -hmm. but it would kind of come down to that too. Yeah, the problem with endings is, as we know, that you can have a, a whole fantastic story and the ending really carries complete disproportionate weight in all that. You can have a fantastic yeah. story and a bad ending and the whole thing will end up leaving a bad taste in, you know, and that's... That just sucks because the ending is so powerful. Yeah, like I remember uh, specifically there was this uh, manga anime. Uh, you might have heard of it. It was kind of big over uh, over in the English side of things. Uh, it's mm -hmm. called Death Note. Oh, yeah. I love Death Note. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the first half of Death Note. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. But then the second half just, I don't know, it just kind of goes off the rails and it uh, it did sour it a little bit for me. And, like, that's always what I say. I always say to people, like, you know, the first half is great, but mm. the second half kind of sucks. You know, what I actually, so. I think I experienced it exactly the same way. There was this point in the middle where they're busy, you know, having their task team and in the investigations and stuff. And at some point I just lost interest. It suddenly became, oh, this doesn't feel like it used to be. It was so exciting in the beginning. <laughs> when you were still figuring out the rules and doing all sorts of these interesting things, and now it's just kind of... Yeah, I think I had it exactly the same as you. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, audience, uh, why don't you tell us what you think there in the comments? Uh, do you think that someone who's reading a story uh, should have any say at all in how the story develops? Uh, how much of a say, that sort of thing? Let us know. And uh, as usual... Uh, this podcast is all just a dream. <laughs> but well, please be <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that spoil the ending, though. Please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And so you can get everything that you need to write, edit, and publish your way. And let us know what you'd like to see from us in a future dream. See you next time. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Uh, oh, that was good. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.